In modern air combat, radar is the principal means of detecting and downing enemy aircraft. Ground-based radar systems locate aircraft and then vector fighters to intercept and eliminate them. Even if the aircraft pass through the barrier of fighters, they encounter a defensive wall of radar-guided munitions. In order for aircraft to survive in this deadly arena, enemy radars must be suppressed. This is the function of electronic warfare. Electronic warfare aims to blind the enemy by jamming or destroying their radars, crippling their ability to defend themselves. The U.S. began using airborne electronic warfare in World War II, sending specially modified aircraft called ferrets to detect enemy radar sites. These electronic reconnaissance missions were a valuable addition to the Allied tactical air effort, and ferret aircraft would continue to fly throughout the Cold War. During the Vietnam War, the enemy's use of sophisticated radar systems posed an enormous threat to U.S. aircraft. In response, the U.S. formed electronic warfare units called Wild Weasels, a name derived from their ferret ancestors. Unlike the ferrets, the Wild Weasels not only located enemy radars, but attacked them as well. It was the Wild Weasel variants of the F-105 that assumed the bulk of the anti-radar missions over Vietnam. In modern air warfare, several different types of aircraft perform an attack mission, working in unison in what is called a strike package. The strike package includes attack aircraft to deliver bombs against targets, fighters to defend package aircraft from enemy fighters, and finally, the electronic warfare aircraft which provides protection against any radar-guided threats. Our job is to support other strike packages. People have to realize that electronic warfare is what the guys in the Pentagon and, and the bigger guys like to call a force multiplier. If we were to send a package by itself into a specific target area without electronic uh, warfare support, their uh, rate of destruction or their rate of being engaged by the enemy is astronomical versus when we're on station doing our job taking out the enemy's eyes uh, it being extremely low. The electronic warfare component of a strike package is based on a triad of aircraft. Wild weasels such as the F-4 Phantom and the F-16 Fighting Falcon attack and destroy radar sites directly with weapons. Jammer aircraft attack enemy radar systems electronically. The jamming role was fulfilled by the EF-111 Ravens until 1995 and is now handled by the EA-6B Prowler aircraft. The final element of the electronic warfare triad is the EC-130 compass call, which jams the enemy communication nets that connect the radars to the enemy missile batteries. Each of these elements play a vital role on the battlefield. Its importance, of course, can't be understated. Without us, there'll be unacceptable losses on the part of other ground attack aircraft or penetrating interdiction type aircraft. You're on it. That's your... The mission of Wild Weasel pilots is one of the most dangerous in the field of tactical air power. The Wild Weasel motto, first in, last out, tells the story. The Wild Weasels will be the first element of the strike package to enter enemy airspace, paving the way for the attack force. And they will be the last to leave, acting as a defensive electronic rear guard. We go out uh, 
to a, an assigned area, to our target area. Uh, we usually go out there first and uh, ahead of a package, uh, and uh, our job is to locate those radars and bring them down, suppress the radars, kill them if we can. The other airplanes are dependent on us to keep those SAMs down for them as they go through uh, to their targets. So we're out there on the front line uh, for most of the time uh, while we're flying. After the Vietnam War, equipment changed, but the Wild Weasel mission remained the same. The F-4 Phantom had been the U.S. Air Force's primary fighter aircraft in Vietnam. With the arrival of the F-15 Eagle fighter in the late 1970s, the Phantoms switched roles, becoming Wild Weasels instead. As aircraft technology improved, the equipment changed once again. The last use of an F-4 as a wild weasel was over southern Iraq in January 1996. Today the wild weasel role has been filled by the F-16 CJ Fighting Falcon. The Falcon is an ideal successor to the F-4 Phantom, well suited to the electronic warfare role. While it is not as large an aircraft, it is capable of carrying the many electronic sensors needed to detect enemy radar emissions. As with the Phantom, the fly-by-wire flight controls of the F-16 reduce the need for a second crewman. This places a tremendous workload on the Falcon pilot. Not only must he pilot the aircraft into the target area and return safely, avoiding terrain when flying at low levels, but he must also search for air-to-ground targets and be aware of any airborne threats that might sneak up. The Wild Weasel pilot thrives in the suppression of enemy air defenses. He's an aviator who can intimidate by mere presence and devastate an enemy's defenses. In the early 1980s, the F-4 was the only wild weasel aircraft. A pair of F-4s would work as a hunter-killer team. Specially modified F-4Gs acted as the hunter, sniffing out enemy radars, while F-4E fighters carried the weapons to attack the radars. F-16s first replaced the killers, serving alongside F-4G Phantoms in the hunter role. The smaller F-16 was more agile than the older F-4, and better able to defend the hunter-killer team against enemy fighters. This configuration, despite its advantages, took some adjustment. I think the hardest part for me to transition to that was trying to transition to the relative size and the difference. And when you start flying with F-4s and other F-4s, you, you learn to visualize the turns and how fast they can turn and how quickly they can react. When you first start flying with an F-16 that's got an instantaneous turn rate, an instantaneous acceleration, you can no longer predict like you used to with other aircraft where he's going to end up. And he's significantly smaller than we are, so that makes it very hard to keep him in sight, especially in weather where the visibility may be very low or the cloud decks. And so if you start pushing him out too far, it gets to be very challenging to keep him in position where he can react quickly to threats behind you threats that may be shooting at you or to get him into position where he can employ his ordnance. 